Hello crafties, welcome back to the knit along. This is part two. Uh, it's been a minute. If you tuned in to the first part, you'll know that the intro was recorded in September of 19 and I don't look like that anymore. Uh, the project that I was wearing and had on my mannequin, I wore that for a portfolio event. That was fun. Um, <laughs> long story short, there's a lot of changes that have happened, not only with me, but with the channel, but this project is still the same. Um, I just named it, actually, after I recorded that first part. But anyway, this is the Frost Fighter face cowl, and I thank you guys for joining me for this second part. So in part one, we cast on, and we knit up 30 rows. Fun times! Yeah. Fun, fun times. So now... I want to go ahead and continue working on it. If I'm not mistaken, you know what, while I'm right here, I am going to look at it because that would be the smart thing to do. And this pattern is worked up in how many rows, how many rows? 94 rows of knit stitch so if you don't know how to do the knit stitch i have tutorials back on my channel which demonstrate your basic knit stitch this whole cowl is garter stitch now that's not to say that you can't work this face fighter um frost fighter face cowl Oof, tongue twister in different stitches but this is the very like beginner basic kind of tutorial that i wanted to do so okay 30 rows so you're just gonna keep knitting and knitting and knitting and knitting until you reach either the desired length of your um, face cowl or you hit those 94 rows. If you guys want to know um, about my supply list that will be listed down in the description below so feel free to check that out. My knitting needles are Furls uh, straight knitting needles. They are really awesome. I'm not sponsored but I have missed working with these and I was like you know what in the world did I do with my Furls needles and as I have been transitioning and working on some back scene behind the scenes things for the channel I came across these bad boys in this project and I was like holy crap I forgot to <laughs> complete my knit along and it, I mean like and it was in the back of my mind but I've been so just swamped it's been ridiculous so yeah now I'm here and I'm glad that I'm here I hope you guys enjoy the format that I'm doing this knit along in I decided to or I decided rather that it would be better for me to just like record them all relatively at one time and then edit accordingly so I can like upload them more steadily because I think the last did along I did it was really choppy in like as far as like the upload schedule and all that and yeah oh man I was under pressure so yeah and let me know um down in the comments below if you like this knit along cool um if you'd like me to do another knit along with one of my patterns or maybe a crochet along with one of my patterns because i don't think i've knitted many or have many knitted patterns but i know i have crochet patterns so just let me know feel free message me i'm always happy to answer my messages on my Facebook page, which will probably be popping up at the bottom of the screen. So something you want to watch with your stitches if you're a beginner, your tension. Tension, hey, it happens to the best of us. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. Um, I have tight tension, I know this. And it just comes with practice. Um, but you don't want your stitches so tight that you can't glide them off of your needles like you need to. Okay, that was 31. And actually, I think what I want to do is grab a knit, a locking um, stitch marker. 
So typically the locking stitch markers, they are for crochet. However, I use them for, and you can too, any um, craft that you'd like. So just so I know where row 30 was. <laughs> okay. And we're off until row 32. I think I mentioned in my um, intro for this, I like these. They make good stocking stuffers. Um, they're good practice for beginner knitters. So, you know, that written pattern is available over on my Etsy page. Again, um, I don't know. I hope that you guys like it. Again, you can always let me know via my Facebook page. Just send me a nice little message being like, hey, could you explain this more? Or can you edit this? And I'll be glad to do so. I'd be glad to do so. I don't remember why I wanted to do this knit along, but I just remember wanting to do it. So, I'm sharing. Yay. Okay. And what's going to happen with this? I'm going to just continue knitting my rows until I get to, again, my desired length or my 94 rows, whichever comes first. And I'll meet y'all back when we get to the part where we need to finish things. Okay, guys. I have knitted up my 94 rows. Um, a quick, like, fangirl squee for a moment, though. Like, look at this. I can actually fit an entire project in my frame now. I love my new recording space. <laughs> okay. So, now that I have my 94 rows, I am excited to move on to the next phase of this project. But before we can do that, we want to make sure that we have enough rows. Now, obviously, if this project is for you, you can measure it against your own face. That's super helpful. Um, if you don't know how to count rows, I do have a row counting tutorial for garter stitch on my channel. It's in my knitting playlist. But for the sake of today's tutorial, what we want to do is zoom in a little bit. <laughs> And so if you didn't put a stitch marker on your sides to count, keep mark of how many rows you were doing, then you're going to start over at the beginning of your row. And you just take the point of your knitting needle. Now, I'm going to show you guys the abridged and easy way to count garter stitch rows because otherwise it's a little annoying, at least to me. So what I do is these ridges... I know by default these ridges in garter stitch it takes two rows to create them. So instead of stretching apart my work and possibly distorting my project, I just count by twos and I'm like two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, hit my first stitch marker. And then so on and so forth. Alright, so once you have counted up those rows, like I said, by counting by twos, then, you know, you're done. You can rejoice. So, you know, it gets a little monotonous, I think, sometimes when we're just doing, like, one singular stitch. I don't know, maybe that's just me, but garter stitch is just that stitch that's like, okay, I'm done with garter stitch. So by the time I get tired of the stitch, I know I'm almost done with the project. It just magically correlates that way for me. Anyway... Now we can cast off. So I'm going to do that on camera because why not? And I'm just going to cast off normally. Oops. Now this yarn isn't as like it's like well it's recycled silk but if I had to compare it to a texture I'd say like spun cotton like you know how what do they call that man what do they call it uh roving roving so if like you had a cotton roving and it was spun this is what this feels like to me so like the slip off the needles it's like none <laughs> so 
if you're using wooden needles, specifically these, <laughs> be gentle. I know my other pair was darker and they in fact snapped on me about the same time that I ran out of yarn for this project and I had to get them replaced. And they actually sent me the right color this time, which I wasn't disappointed with the last color. I'm like, it's furls, whatever. But I had originally ordered the teak ones. So now I have the teak ones because tragedy befell my old ones. <laughs> and I was so sad to throw them away because they were so gorgeous. Okay. Just casting off. And again, if you're just now tuning into this part of the knit along, all of my supplies will be listed down in my description. For my original pattern, I used a slightly different yarn in which the, um, the amount of yarn you need in the pattern is correct. I had to adjust for this one, so I actually needed two of the little cakes for this one. No big deal, <laughs> no big deal. But I will make sure that all the supplies are listed in all the parts of this knit along so that you guys can order as you need or, you know, figure out your measurements as needed. Just drop that stitch. Random question time. Down in the comments below, let me know. What's your favorite song? What are some of your favorite songs to listen to while you're sitting back crocheting or knitting? Or what do you listen to? Because I know sometimes I like to listen to my music um, that I buy off Amazon. Or other times I'll listen to like Bible podcasts. Things like that. So let me know down below. Or hey, maybe you watch a YouTuber. I know I am guilty of that sometimes. It's like, how are you watching what you're doing? I don't know about you guys but casting off always takes me forever or it feels like it takes forever okie doke so don't cut your yarn yet but we have we have reached essentially our goal here which is <laughs> which was to cast off so um like i said don't cut your yarn off because we're gonna it'll just be simpler to leave it attached so what I want to do is show you guys the supply. So this is the second little round cake that I had. It's completely hollow, but we have way more than enough to complete this project. So I'm going to put them back to the side. I'm going to grab a crochet hook, whichever one's most handy. I actually think I'm going to use my 6.5. Yeah, start your yarn. Plus, I think the gauge for this yarn was 6. 0.5 millimeters. I don't have my card anymore, or at least it's not in my sight right now. But okay, so what we want to do is insert our hook into that loop and pull it down. And I'm going to zoom in. Back to tutorial height we go. Okay, and what I want to do is chain one. Now, with yarns that aren't as thick as this, like say if you were using Red Heart, I would say use a hook that's maybe half a size smaller than the needles that you just used. So if you used 5mm knitting needles, I'd recommend using a 4.5mm crochet hook. In this case, since the yarn is so beefy, 
I mean like you could use five millimeter knitting needles obviously I just did and be just fine but if you're gonna use like wooden tools then I recommend using a sturdy enough hook to support the yarn weight so that's what I'm doing here and I'm just gonna turn my work after I chain that one and I'm gonna start working in these stitches that I cast off so just gonna insert my hook there and it can be a little fiddly at first but it should be fine I'm just gonna yarn over and I'm gonna single crochet all the way across this row all right so as you can see I did end up changing hooks <laughs> uh, that 6.5 was a bit of a hassle but anyway so I'm just gonna complete this last single crochet of this row I'm not gonna cut my yarn but I have a lovely row of single crochets perfectly finished edge I'm gonna change one, chain one god and then I'm going to turn my work and I'm just going to single crochet one right there before I move on let's recount our stitches so there was one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So originally there was 24 stitches. Of course, we're down one because of that chain one space and all that. So what I want to do before I begin doing all that single crochet work is to come over here, let me zoom out a little bit, on my opposite end, and I'm going to get some stitch markers. There's one. Then let me grab huh, another one, or two, or three, or four. Why? Another one. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to determine where I want my buttons later. So obviously you don't want them too close to this edge right here. So these first little four rows, maybe six rows, I kind of discount. And I come up to this fifth line. I'm sorry. Yeah, one, two, three, four. I'm sorry, I come up to this fourth line of um, garter stitch. And I just kind of decide where I want my buttons to go. Now this process, you can, I don't want to say you can eyeball it, but you kind of can. Okay. And just place your stitch markers. So... Something that kind of helps me with this, if I don't necessarily feel up to the challenge of counting, <laughs> I know that sounds really bad. I mean, I could. And count over. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven stitches in. Okay. And then counting the stitches between there one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I've come to another stitch marker in the 11th stitch. And the reason you kind of want these numbers in place is so when you're making your buttons hole, button holes over here, they line up. So there's 11. And then after that 11th stitch right there, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. So I'm kind of line up this opposite edge with this edge and yes you're going to want to block this project because one end is a little or look might look stretchier than the other so all right there's that bit <laughs> um so we have this end over here so we can kind of eyeball and see but since we counted our stitches we should very well be able to line these up and just 
like the size of your buttonhole will determine how many chains I mean, that you need to make your loops over here so my buttons they aren't that big and they're not over here but I'm gonna save the button attachment for later so I'm gonna go ahead and single crochet five more along my row There's two, three, four, and five. Five total. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. So this 6th, 7th, 8th, and ninth stitch. So 1, 2, 3, 4. The next 4 stitches I'm going to skip. I'm going to chain. Chain 3. 2, 3. And I'm going to skip these next 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4 stitches and single crochet into that fifth one. Okay. And what this does, it lines up with this stitch marker over here. So if there were a button here, voila, that's where it would be going. So, I am going to single crochet in the next, let me see, I have, this is seven, maybe like ten stitches between there, eleven. Yep, so we're going to single crochet in the next nine. Okay, now that we've done that, we're going to chain three. One, two, three. And we're going to count over four stitches. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to single crochet into that fifth one. And it's okay if you only have one or two stitches left over at the end. Like I do. Just single crochet in both of those stitches. Like so. And we have made our buttonholes. Now before we move on to the next row, what you're going to want to do is make sure that your buttonholes line up with your stitch markers or where you're going to sew your buttons onto. So mine do, actually. Mine do. So if you're satisfied with how that looks, then we can move on to our last row of crochet. Okay, so we're going to chain one. And I know our yarn looks really low, like really, really low. If you're following along with this exact material, this is all you have. But I promised we have plenty. So I'm chaining one, turning my work, and I'm going to single crochet in each stitch along. So that's into the base of that chain one, into the next stitch. Now for these chain three spaces, 
I'm also going to single crochet three into those spaces. So here's one, two, three. I'm just going to crochet in the other stitches as normal. Okay, I've reached the end of that row and I'm going to chain one and I'm going to cut my yarn. So if you have a little bit of yarn left over, like I do, I like to save my scraps and use them for stuffing for later projects. It's a recycled yarn, so it would be in the same good spirit to keep it until needed again. Alright, so what we're of course going to want to do now is sew in our ends all that may exist if you changed colors in yours or if you did something different where you have more than like two or three strings then go ahead and do that and then I'll show you guys next time how to attach the buttons and finish off everything thanks for tuning in and until next time guys happy making <laughs>